From Swiss Watch Expo, spotlight on the Rolex Daytona, six key models that defined its history. Rolex has produced iconic and remarkable watches that are sought after by collectors and casual wearers alike. However, it can be said that there is no other watch more pursued by collectors than the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona. Launched in 1963, the Daytona has a long, colorful history and a wide range of models that make it so interesting to collect and delve into. Today, the Daytona's models number in the hundreds. We can't cover them all, so we'll trace the history of the Daytona from then and now with six milestone models. Did your favorite Rolex Daytona models make it? Stay tuned to find out. Rolex actually started producing chronograph watches as early as the 1930s, which were then called just Rolex chronographs. In that decade, Rolex produced chronographed wristwatches like these with single push buttons to start, stop, and reset the watch. In 1955, Rolex introduced a manual wind chronograph with the Oyster case reference 6234. This watch featured a tachymeter scale on the outer ring and a telemeter scale on the inner ring. These early iterations would become the basis of the Rolex Daytona. The pre-Daytona reference 6238 is considered the father of the Rolex Daytona as this is where it started to make its now iconic form. Monochromatic dials, baton hands, and the removal of the telemeter scale, then used to measure distances, resulted in a much cleaner look. This model is powered by the Valjoux Caliber 72 chronograph movement. It did not yet have the oyster case, nor the screw-down crown and buttons that's part of the Daytona's design today. In production until 1967, it coincided with its updated version, reference 6239. Speaking of the 6239, did you know that it's actually considered the first ever Rolex Daytona? Even though it wasn't even called a Daytona back then, this model marked the period where Rolex finally categorized and named their chronographs. Why is this considered the first Daytona then? The changes made to this model gave it the sporty, ruggedly elegant look that the Daytona has become famous for. First, Rolex switched to inverse colors for the subdials from the reference 6238's entirely monochromatic dial. Then, the tachymeter scale was moved from the edge of the dial onto the bezel. Initially, the bezel was graduated up to 300 units per hour, later on changed to 200 units per hour. Rolex sponsored the 24-hour race at the Daytona International Speedway, and this led to the watch being named the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona in 1964. The following year, the name Daytona finally appeared on its dial. Enjoying this video so far? Subscribe to our channel and get updates on new videos. Now, this isn't a particular model, but a style that's familiar to any Rolex fan. The exotic dial Rolex Daytona. Produced by Singer, a well-known watch dial manufacturer of the era, the exotic dials had very distinctive features. Most noticeable are the outer track and matching subdials and block hour markers instead of lines. Notice also the seconds subdial beside 9 o'clock. It's marked at 15, 30, 45, 60 instead of the 20, 40, 60 marking in the standard models. While they were first considered undesirable, the exotic dials gained popularity through legendary actor and racer Paul Newman. He wore the design in every appearance that it eventually became known as the Paul Newman dial. It has since become sought after by collectors and is now even more valuable than standard dial Rolex Daytonas. Even with all the updates to the reference 6239, or the first Daytona, it still used pump-style pushers that offer less water resistance. In 1967, Rolex introduced reference 6240, this time with screw-down style pushers. These held the two pushers in place, thus increasing water resistance and earning Daytona the oyster name on its dial. The functional design of these pushers have become an integral part of the Rolex Daytona's design DNA and can still be found in the Daytona models of today.
The next generation of Rolex Daytona watches would be introduced in 1988 on its 25th anniversary. This marked the first real change in the production of the Daytona, the use of a self-winding movement, caliber 4030. It took Rolex two decades before updating the Daytona with an automatic caliber. The manually wound movement was actually a weakness of the Daytona, especially during the quartz crisis. The series also came with a number of important updates that bridged the Daytona from the vintage period to the contemporary era. The case size increased to 40 millimeters, the hour markers changed from blocks to elongated arrowhead markers, and the subdials changed from fully contrasting color to just a contrasting timing clock. All these changes put the Daytona up to a modern standard. However, the movement was still not completely in-house, but rather one based on Zenith El Primero's Caliber 400 movement. In the year 2000, Rolex finally introduced the long-awaited reference 116250, the first Daytona to have a true in-house movement, the Caliber 4130. The movement was designed to run efficiently on the simplest manner possible. While Caliber 4030 has two separate mechanisms, Caliber 4130 combined them in a single module. This was done with future serviceability in mind and makes the Caliber 4130 a favorite among watch repairers. Now we get to the most modern version of the Rolex Daytona. In 2016, Rolex introduced the reference 116500LN, one that ignited excitement among collectors. The watch incorporates the Cerachrom ceramic bezel into the classic stainless steel model. While it has the same technical capabilities as the model before it, the use of the Cerachrom, Rolex's proprietary ceramic compound, made it less prone to scratching and fading. It looks much edgier too, don't you think? The Rolex Daytona Ceramic became the most talked about watch of 2016. Until today, watch lovers eagerly await their turn to own this watch, which is said to have a years-long wait list. With a history almost six decades long, it's amazing to see how far the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona has come and how it's still very in demand after all these years. Want to learn more about Rolex watches? Click on the upper right screen for our All About Rolex playlist. Don't miss out, we launch two videos weekly on the best and the latest in watches. To get updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel.